It is the 19th of December 2021. My name is Liam. I am 29 years old. I have read 433 books to date and this is my favourite book of all time. I was worried nothing would ever beat Infinite Jest but this one has because I think it is as topical and candid as Infinite Jest was at the time it was published and for me that is the deciding factor. Crossroads was released on October 5th in the UK this year and I've been reading it slowly every day since until December the 7th and I've got a signed copy from Mort Stones and this book has been pretty heavily battered in its time. It has been in my bag for months and I have been taking my time with it because when I really, really like something, I like to go very slowly with it just so I can really absorb everything it has. And I like this book so much that I'm nervous that I won't be able to convey the power this book has in this review, but I will try. Crossroads is the first novel of a trilogy and it is a family drama. And that family is the Hildebrandt family. We have two parents and four children and we hear narrations from all of them very slowly. This happens chronologically in real time and so the pacing of this story because we hear almost over the course of a few days in this story we can see that from the trilogy what's going to happen is there's probably going to be a big time leap in the next book and the next book and he's trying to really get every moment captured. If you've ever read The Corrections, the writing style is familiar in how it changes perspective, but this is so much more improved. Everything that I had a problem with in The Corrections is gone and so much more new detail is in this writing. It's just like Franzen has outdone himself. This is by far his best book and he's one of the few writers I see that are getting better and better with time. The main plot of Crossroads is revealed on the opening pages which is that the father who is a priest is involved in a scandal and it's taking place in a parking lot in the opening scenes. I won't reveal any more about the plot in this review other than to say that I think that this is a heavy reference to the film First Reformed and on reading the pages I even tweeted a status about this in that we have that story opening in a church. The church in this book is called First Reformed, as it is in the film. And I know that's a common name, but we have a story around this First Reformed church, which has a priest who is involved in a scandal in a parking lot. And it was just there and then I saw that this book is trying to communicate on the level of that film. Uh, and if you haven't seen that film, it's a great film. Go check it out. There's a different tone in that film, but I think they're talking about a similar thing. How does religion work in modern times? Crossroads is the name of the Christian youth group of the First Reformed Church in this book, and it's the method by which a lot of the family in members interact. But I think as a title, Crossroads is implying that this book is about the many roads we can take towards the cross. And we have six family members, each falling away from God or falling closer to God. It's just about how all of these interactions are occurring. Crossroads is about each of the Hildebrand's family's path towards and away from God. And each character has a distinct and complementary view on spirituality. The message of Crossroads is how each of us have a spiritual journey that is shaped by our own life experiences and the spiritual journeys of others. Crossroads tells us that we are not alone in our beliefs or disbeliefs about God and our deeply personal identities and communities are formed from these experiences and we are part of a community whether we want to be or not. In a way Crossroads is saying that individualism doesn't really exist because we are all formed by other people or how other people interact with God. So there's like no escaping who we are as people we are always formed by something or someone else. Okay, so here's why this book is particularly special to me. So in the last four months, I've become quite close to God and church in general, and this book has kind of been helping me out with that. I started this book on one of the first days I walked into church, and I finished it at the end of a church course, and it just felt very symbolic to me that it had been with me through that journey. If there's a prevailing theme in Crossroads, it's that it humanizes our failings to be good people and to be immediately good Christians. 
Crossroads has motivated me to do and be a better person by being more patient with my expectations of being better. It tells me that it's okay to not always be the best, but that there's always a journey and that to look out for signs in other people and other people's experiences is all part of the thing. It's all part of growing as a person, as an individual. And I think surprisingly, there are some profound and deep testimonies of religious faith in this book that I didn't think Franzen would be able to do. And I think most readers can't do. And they refrain from trying because it's just so hard to pull off. And you're also so self-conscious when writing about something that deep and personal. But, but Franzen does it here. It's almost like he was talking to a priest and made sure that this was like... It's on par with less accessible spiritual writers from Herman Hesse to even Carl Jung in that I think it really does convey what it's like to to believe, to suddenly see faith in something that you didn't before. He really somehow manages to write down people falling in and falling out of faith just so clearly and eloquently. It's just, it is a very hard thing to communicate even in words, and he, he's, he's done it on a page, and that takes a lot of courage. And to double down on all of that, here are three reasons why I think Jonathan Franzen is one of the best living writers we have today. Number one, many authors cannot appeal to both serious and casual readers, but Franzen can do both, and I think he's the best example I can think of that does. Number two, many authors refrain from writing about serious personal topics because they require so much sincerity and severity in the, in the writing style. And Franzen is someone who can do that. He talks about the elephant in the room, but he'll hold your hand while doing it. He's not there to shock or provoke. He wants to really just help you get through those things that you struggle and are afraid to think about. Finally, for me, most writers don't write with the detail required for me to visualize what's happening in the story. And I really like to do that. I read very slowly, but I like to see it play out in my mind like a proper film. And I think only when you do that, you become aware of all your assumptions about what's happening in the story, and you can really engage with the characters and the constructs presented to you. It's a really thrilling way to read, and I'd highly recommend you try it if you can. But this is a book that you can definitely do that with. I saw this in like HD quality in my mind. It's like a HBO drama series. There's everything in this book I can see very clearly in my mind. And that's why I read it so slowly. I enjoyed it so much. I wanted to see every little bit of it. And also, just a small point, you don't need to be American, white, or religious to like this book. And that's another reason why it's just so great. A lot of authors bring their identity in the story, but you don't have to know about Illinois or anything about Christianity to fully understand what is being conveyed here. It is for everyone, and it's hard to write something that is so deeply personal, but also widely accessible. And I think this is one of the main reasons I made this review. I think a lot of people can read this stuff so easily. It just comes so, it's so easy and enjoyable to read. Like it's almost like contemporary fiction, but there's a reason he's classified as literary fiction or classic as, a, as an author, because he does write with very strong themes. And only when you take a step back to think about what he's doing, will you see how amazing this book is. This gets so much deeper than anything else and this is why I think Franzen is just such a good writer because he appeals to both casual readers but also to serious readers who are looking for more depth. He's fun for those who don't think about what they're reading but he's important to those who also do. And Crossroads communicates what I think is a central message in all of Franzen's stories that each of us end up becoming a good person but often by accident or through initially bad intentions. It's a humble cynicism that each of us are on our own journey to becoming better, whether we like it or not. So in the corrections, I think Jonathan Franzen shows us that each of us feel more unlikable than we are perceived by others, that we're actually perceived as better by others, at least within that family unit we have. But in Crossroads, Franzen is showing us that we are more conscientious and spiritually malleable than we appear to others. And I think Franzen got his message across in the corrections very well for the family. 
And so it only makes sense that he moved to God. I mean, what's more, after talking about the family, what do you go to next? Then it's God. And then I think the next thing he could write about is only like the environment or like a big world issue, because clearly he's just trying to get in at those themes that we actually experience in the real world. And through seeing his series of writing from the family to religion, some of his environmental writing, you can see that Franzen is all around a good guy through what he writes. He's writing us into better times and for us as readers to be better people. And given all this, I'm generally open-minded, but Franzen is one of few exceptions. I can't understand why people dislike Franzen. I know he has some views about social media and whatever, but if you judge a writer by his writing and what he intends to do with his writing, then Franzen is undoubtedly what we need. He's undoubtedly a good writer and a good example for all of us. Like I literally cannot understand. Like if you find friends and like bad at writing, then I just I just don't know what to give you. Like I don't know I don't know what to help you with. And for a long time friends and used to get a lot of stick for not being able to write female characters very well. And I think he does it very well here and all the people that used to criticize him have just gone silent. Like there's just no nobody knows what to say about this book because Franzen has outdone all of the criticisms people used to have against him. So it's one of the few times I think the blurb on the back of the book is actually, it's actually correct. Like this level of emphaticism is, is accurate. We should, we should be this fanatical about Franz right now. Finally, last impressions. Where do I think this series is going? I think this is going to end up a bit like House of Spirits by Isabella Allende or 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. We'll have a full family history going through. So we're going to have the younger siblings be central characters in the next book. I think Perry is going to be the main character and he's going to become very good. I think Judson is a play on Judas. I think Judson is going to betray someone who resembles something like Jesus, who I think is the character revealed towards the end of the novel. Um, I think that might be who Judson betrays somehow for reasons I don't know. I think that Clem, it's not, I think something very bad has happened for Clem, destined for Clem. Um, and the parents, I think the parents might be fine from here on out. I, I, I think that might be okay. It's really hard to know where he's going to go with it, but I think Perry will be the main character of the next story, and I'm happy about that. So that is about it. Uh, I made an Instagram post about this when I first initially read it. If you wanted to check that out, it's in the description. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments, I'd love to hear them. I really like this book, so discussions always welcome. Happy reading.